Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within education services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be discussing the configuring SRX security logs in the CLI Learning Byte. All right, so let's jump right to the example. Here on the left, you see a topology. And it's a pretty basic topology. We have one SRX device, that's VSRX1, and it's connected to a couple different things, or a few different things. Uh, first, the user connects in on Gigi001, and then the syslog server connects in on Gigi002, and then the internet connects into VSRX1 on Gigi000. And so with this, I want to take note of the IP addresses. The user is using 10.1.1.100, and the syslog server is using 10.5.5.100. Now that'll be important as we check things out and configure things. All right, so the criteria for the example is we want to configure local security logging for internet-bound traffic. We want to store these logs on VSRX1. Then we also want to configure remote security logging for internet-bound traffic. And then we want to send those logs to the syslog server, that is. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this going. We'll jump to the CLI of VSRX1. All right, here is the CLI for VSRX1. We need to jump into configuration mode and go to the security log configuration hierarchy. And you can see here, nothing's configured. That's okay, we plan on configuring things here. Okay, so first we need to set the mode. So set mode, we have two different options. We have event and stream. Event means that the logs are processed using or in the control plane. Stream means that they're processed directly in the forwarding plane. Stream. It's going to be more effective, more efficient, so we're going to use mode stream. And then we need to set a source interface. And what this interface is used for is to source it from, the logs from, the IP address that is associated with the source interface so that the syslog server knows where it's coming from. And so we can set the source interface to Gigi002. And really, it could be any interface as long as it's something that's reachable on the uh, the syslog server. And technically, it really doesn't even need to be reachable. All this really does is it tells the syslog server where it's coming from. So as long as there's an IP address associated with that, that's what's going to show up on the syslog server. Okay, so let's first configure the first stream. This is going to be the remote logging stream. We're going to say set uh, stream remote logging. And we're going to set the host, which is going to be the syslog server, 10.5.5.100. Now there's other parameters we can set here, but this is just the basics of what we need to get this working. I don't want to dive into too many details about the different options of parameters because it's not necessary for what we need to do. And then let's set the second stream, which is going to be the local stream. So we'll say local logging. And we just need to set a file name and we can call this local logs. And so that's the logging configuration. That's pretty straightforward, but we're not done yet. We need to do one other thing. We need to configure the security policy that handles this traffic to log the traffic or nothing will be logged. So go to security policies from zone users to zone internet policy inet access. We can see here that there's a permit and that's it. So we need to set then log session init. We could do session close as well, but we'll just do session init for this example. And we can see that we do have the policy set with logging with session initialization. Let's go ahead and commit that and exit configuration mode. All right, so traffic is already flowing through that policy from that user to the internet. So let's go ahead and look at the actual logs. The first thing we want to do is check the local log. We're, we're already here with VSRX1, so let's look at the log. That's going to be show log slash var slash traffic log. That's where these logs are stored under the var slash traffic log directory. And then it's going to be that file name that we use. And that file name was local logs. Type local log. We can see here, yes, we definitely are getting plenty of logs happening. We can see if we look at uh, one individual log, we can see it's coming from 10.1.1.100 and going to 8.8.8.8, .8 which is a host on the internet. And so this is exactly what we expect to see. Okay, so the last thing we want to check is the syslog server. So here is the syslog server, and we can look at the log using the telvar log syslog command. And you can see in here that, yes, we do have syslog messages in the syslog file for the syslog server. So this is perfect. This is what we want to see. And this is going to be very similar to what we were seeing locally on the VSRX device. And we can see that we have a session creation from 10.1.1.100, the user going to 8.8.8. .8 .8. Dot eight. I think I said enough eights there. If not, four eights is what I was getting at. 
And so, yes, so we see that this syslog that was local that we saw on VSRX1 is also showing up on the syslog server because of our configuration that we set up for remote syslogging and local syslogging. This is exactly what we want to see. So that brings us to the end of this learning bite. We discussed how to uh, configure local and remote security logging, and then we demonstrated how to verify that the local and remote security logging was working correctly. And of course, we did this through the CLI. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.